Joanna Burke, Fear, A Cultural History Prepare to embark on an exploration of the roots of our deepest fears through Joanna Burke's Fear, A Cultural History. This comprehensive summary delves into the relationship between fear and our most primal instincts, and the diverse ways through which societies across history face their mortal anxieties. Discover the origins of humanity's fear of death, learn about the importance of design in addressing mass panic and the experiences of soldiers in combat, and contemplate how fear affects parenting and our nightly dreams. Burke's expert storytelling unravels the complexities of fear, ultimately casting light on the universal experience of facing unease, insecurity, and dread. Fear of Death Unraveled Human fear, in essence, is often rooted in the dread of our own mortality. Once, rituals and beliefs assuaged this innate dread, but the lower classes in the Western world were stripped of these comforts during the 19th century. To worsen the situation, deceased paupers were buried without memorials in mass graves, their bodies hastily decomposed with caustic solutions. Vulnerable to grave robbers, these individuals' fears of their ultimate fate spiraled, occasionally even culminating in death itself due to the overwhelming anxiety. Evolution of Public Space Safety the nostalgic ambience of old-fashioned cinemas and theaters may evoke warm feelings, but modern public buildings have evolved for a reason, safety. Past tragedies, such as the 1883 incident in Sunderland's Victoria Hall where 1,200 children gathered for a performance, highlighted the importance of preventing mass panic in crowded spaces. An unfortunate locked door led to a deadly stampede, with 183 children trampled to death. Similarly, a fire at Chicago's Iroquois Theater in 1903 resulted in 600 lives lost as people fought to escape. This realization of human panic in emergencies sparked innovative design solutions, like Indianapolis inventor Carl Prinzler's development of panic relief bars on doors. In the UK, firefighter William Paul Gerhardt advocated for improved theater designs, featuring easy evacuation within four minutes and the implementation of emergency exits, wider aisles, stairways, and doorways. The spacious layout of modern theaters is not mere modernity, it is a time-tested response to ensure the safety and well-being of everyone within these public spaces. Overcoming Childhood Fears Children's fears, including the dread of monsters lurking beneath their beds, have sparked debates among educators, families, and psychologists alike. In the past, parenting guides considered a fearful child an embarrassment, halting their growth into a well-rounded and independent adult. Parents were expected to help their children conquer such fears, if they failed, mothers bore the brunt of the criticism. Overly gentle and protective mothers were believed to create shy, fearful, and lonely children, especially for boys, who faced accusations of being emasculated. In the 1950s, as more mothers entered the workforce, educators began to appreciate maternal protection, although concerns arose that children left alone would develop fearfulness. Ultimately, mothers faced blame for a fearful child, whether they were highly protective or left their children unguarded. Accommodating and addressing children's fears without resorting to extremes is an essential aspect of balanced parenting, allowing them to grow into confident and emotionally stable adults. Unveiling Night Terrors The mystery of terrifying nighttime dreams has puzzled experts for centuries. Early beliefs blamed physical discomfort for nightmares, leading 19th-century physicians to recommend avoiding overeating or sleeping on one's back. However, Sigmund Freud transformed dream analysis by unveiling their psychological causes. He uncovered the connection between dreams and repressed desires, hidden urges, and buried emotions. Dreams, according to Freud, let our guard down and permit ordinarily suppressed thoughts to surface in unexpected ways, often symbolically representing waking life activities. By analyzing patients' dreams, Freud aimed to help them confront and accept their buried desires and perversions. Panic in Unstable Times Terrorist attacks and media coverage have led to heightened anxiety, making people more likely to panic at any perceived threat. This isn't unprecedented, 
history has seen similar patterns of emotional insecurity during times of instability. For instance, in the 1920s, Great Britain experienced high unemployment and civil unrest, leading to growing insecurity among the population. A 1926 BBC satirical radio broadcast demonstrated this environment perfectly, with a seemingly legitimate news report describing protests by a working-class mob and outlandish claims about the destruction of Big Ben. Despite the absurd details, the broadcast led to widespread panic, revealing how societal instability can fuel fear and panic in the face of any perceived threat. Fear, Soldier's Double-Edged Sword Fear, a common experience on the battlefield, can both hinder and enhance soldiers' performance under extreme stress. Despite the usual depiction of soldiers as fearless, studies reveal that the majority experience fear during combat, often suffering from related health issues. However, this same fear can also fuel adrenaline, driving some soldiers to take bold, even reckless actions. Although society often views soldiers as courageous and unshakable, fear is actually the prevalent emotion on the battlefield. Research dating back to 1947 found that 90% of infantry soldiers experienced fear-related health problems, such as trembling limbs, sleeplessness, and digestive issues. This constant terror can undermine soldiers' mental and physical well-being, weakening the overall strength of the military. Surprisingly, this same fear can inspire acts of heroism. When adrenaline courses through their veins, soldiers can act more decisively and take calculated risks. One example of this was in 1944, when young American soldier William Manchester, gripped by fear, stormed a shack in Okinawa, Japan, and took down a sniper targeting his fellow soldiers. Although physically and emotionally spent afterward, Manchester's fear ultimately spurred him to act courageously when it mattered most. The Fear of Nuclear Armageddon Throughout the 20th century, fear of a nuclear war reached unprecedented levels, fueled by events like the Cold War, the launch of Soviet satellite Sputnik, and the Cuban Missile Crisis. Perpetuating this fear are government simulations of nuclear attacks and ineffective measures like school drills, resulting in entire generations growing up in terror. The onset of the Cold War and the nuclear arms race that followed exacerbated global fears. The launch of the Soviet satellite, Sputnik, in 1957 rattled Americans, and panic intensified when Soviet missiles were installed in Cuba, just 90 miles from Florida. Fear continued to grow in the 1980s as President Ronald Reagan developed a space-based nuclear weaponry system, escalating tensions among nuclear powers. The possibility of nuclear Armageddon weighed heavily on the Western world, with 75% of UK respondents in a 1983 TV Times survey believing that a nuclear war was imminent. Government initiatives aimed at preparing civilians for a nuclear war paradoxically fueled even more fear. Simulated nuclear attacks, such as the one conducted in New York on February 8, 1951, became routine. Schoolchildren were taught to take cover under their desks, a practice that not only proved ineffective but also caused trauma among students and teachers. Consequently, several generations of children grew up in constant fear of the looming threat of a nuclear war. Evolving Fears and Overcoming Cancer The fears surrounding health have always shifted over time. In the 19th century, people were more concerned about infectious diseases like smallpox, while today cancer is the most feared disease. Combating cancer is akin to fighting fear itself, and one inspiring example is Edna Kehill, who conquered her fears with belief in a protein-based diet and went on to write a book about her battle against cancer, Sealed Orders. In the past, fear of infectious diseases such as smallpox was common as they posed a significant threat to people's health. However, as infectious diseases became less of a concern, chronic illnesses like cancer began to take their place in the public's concerns. In fact, a 1954 survey in Manchester, UK, revealed that 70% of women listed cancer as their most feared disease. Facing cancer often means confronting fear as well. Edna Kehill's story perfectly illustrates this struggle. 
Diagnosed with cancer and given only six months to live in 1946, she refused to be paralyzed by fear and embarked on an unorthodox treatment journey centered around a protein-based diet. Through her determination and resilience, Kihil's fear subsided, and she went on to live for 12 more years. Sharing her experience in a book titled Sealed Orders, Kihil's powerful message inspires others to conquer fear in battling cancer and exemplifies how facing our fears can impact the quality of our lives. In Essence, Fear, A Cultural History by Joanna Burke showcases humanity's complex relationship with fear, covering a wide array of topics from our innate fear of death to the evolutions in building design to combat mass panic. Through intimate storytelling and historical analysis, the book reveals mankind's unrelenting resilience towards fear, and its impact on parenting, dreams, and our daily lives. By exploring both the practical and emotional aspects of fear, this summary provides deeper understanding and insight into how fear has shaped our thoughts, behaviors, and society throughout history.